Good morning, everyone. It's Christmas Eve, if you've forgotten. <laughs> and I trust that you have done all your preparations for Christmas and are re ready to celebrate Jesus' birth. Something that Jesus' followers have done, been doing for nearly 2,000 years. Something that each one of us have been doing perhaps as children, not really knowing what was meant, except that if you had been good over the year, you were bought presents by Santa Claus, also known as your parents. You also, who, I must say, had an intimate knowledge Yes, our parents, they had an intimate knowledge of whether being been good or bad, didn't they? But we didn't necessarily appreciate that what Jesus had come down to this earth to do. Some of us probably played parts in school nativity plays. I know I did in the infant school. And yes, I forgot my lines at the crucial time, even though I could remember everybody else's lines and prompted them on occasions. But when it was my turn to speak, there was just silence. Jesus came into the world not to give script writers a good story to write about and use and even elaborate on but to save us from our sins. Most of us have learned this over the years as we have become Christians. And we have heard the so-called stories about Jesus many times. But as we all know, the Jesus story actually started nine months before. And our reading tells us of the birth of Jesus being foretold to Mary the mother of Jesus. It is from Luke's Gospel. Now we know that Luke was a trained doctor and was a Christian in the first century. He wrote his Gospel to show his benefactor Theophilus, whom he had brought to Christianity, the certainty of the things that you have been taught, as he puts it in Luke chapter 1, verse 4. Luke acknowledges that there are other counts around, and it is believed that he used Mark's gospel as a base for his gospel, but he supplemented it with information from other sources. He also refers to the oral tradition handed down from those who were eyewitnesses to the events of the text. In fact, it is thought that he was one of the eyewitnesses at the time of the crucifixion. To Luke, the record of Jesus' life had to be absolutely right, and it is what he believed, and Theolophus had been taught. But it is also the basis of our belief in God. Luke was convinced who Jesus was, and we know that he himself was an eyewitness, as I've said. Are we truly convinced who Jesus is? 
that is something you can only answer for yourself and it will come from the depths of your heart. Luke starts telling the, of the life of Jesus beginning at the time of Zechariah when he was first visited by the angel Gabriel and was told that his wife Elizabeth would have a son who was to be called John. We are told that Zechariah did not believe what he was told and that he was struck dumb. Our reading is six months on from that and another visit by the angel Gabriel to, the, to earth, but this time to Mary. And it is then that she is first told that she is to be the mother of Jesus. Mary was a young girl living in the town of Nazareth and betrothed to Joseph. We don't know that much about Mary's background, but we are told a little more about Joseph. We know he was a carpenter, so he was a skilled man and not a labourer. We know that he was of David's line to fulfil the prophecy of Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, something that we've read earlier this Christmas. Mark's primary reason for mentioning Joseph is to highlight this last point. He gets no other mention except in the genealogy of Jesus in Mark 3 and verse 23. We do not read about him again in the Gospel. Mary, however, is mentioned many times in the Gospel and is clearly a follower of Jesus. She is referred to during his ministry. She is at the cross. She is thought to be one of the people praying in the locked room after Jesus' death. Our reading is all about Mary and her reaction when the angel gives her the news that she is to have a son. We read that Mary was troubled by the sight of the angel and his greeting to her. But she listened to what he had to say. She did, however, ask him how such a thing could happen as she was a virgin. The angel answered her and explained what would happen that the Holy Spirit would come to you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. There is no mention of any sexual intercourse. Mary was told that her relative, Elizabeth, was with child, someone who'd been unable to conceive in her youth and no doubt spoken about by the villagers because she was being bar she was barren. What as a young woman, someone we now now consider as a child, probably around fourteen or fifteen, and possibly even younger, would your reaction have been? Oh, what a shame. My life has been ruined. How can I face show, showing my face around here again? I will have to go into hiding. But this wasn't Mary's reaction. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. Verse 38 of our reading. Would you have said this? Do you say this to God when he asks you to do something for him? Or do you look around for an excuse not to obey God? Are we prepared to trust God like Mary did? Because if that's what we do, 
then we will see God growing this church through our own ministries. Well, we certainly are always questioning God and wanting confirmation of what he is asking us to do. It happened in the Bible. And here is one example. One of the passages in the Bible that always sticks in my mind is the story of Gideon in Judges 6, verses 1 to 40. The Israelites had done evil in the eyes of God and for seven years God had let the Midianites rule over them and over the promised land. And then God listened to the prayers of his people and sent a prophet to them saying that they must stop worshipping other gods. I wonder if we might send another prophet at this time. We all seem to have other gods that we worship. God then chose Gideon to be the one to lead the people in overthrowing the oppressors. But Gideon started making excuses, saying he was a tribe of Manhasa and the least of his family. He was saying, I'm not a leader. Go and find somebody else. Is that what we say to God when he asks us to do something? God promised to be with Gideon but he was still not satisfied. He wanted a sign which was duly given to Gideon. So Gideon prayed to the Lord and was asked to build an altar to God, tearing down the altar to the Midianites, the altar that the Midianites had built to their God. This upset the Midianites a great deal and they gathered a great army to crush the Israelites. Gideon sent for the men of the tribe of Israel to come and fight the Midianites. But it would then appear that Gideon got cold feet and asked God for another sign that he was with him. We read in verse 36, Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is only dew on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand as you have said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early next day He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a whole bowl full of water. (coughs) Then Gideon said to God, Do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. But this time, make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. That night, God did that. Only on the fleece was dry, and all the ground was covered with dew. Gideon kept asking God to show him that he was with him. Is that what we do? We are given a tasks by God but we try to find a way of getting out of doing it quite often have you ever felt that God was saying something to you so that you have to put on some conditions but they have been satisfied so we have just sometimes turn around and say well that's just a coincidence and try to forget the whole episode. Has that happened to you? 
it has happened to me. Sometimes we just can't get away and we need to do what God wants us to do. If you recall the account of what happened to Zechariah when he was told that Elizabeth would have child, he did not believe it and look at the result. He was struck dumb until the naming ceremony of the child. When his tongue was released, so he could speak the name of the child. It was when he was obeying God, when others wanted to name the child after him, that he was able to speak so that the child would be named John and could go on to fulfill his destiny. Are we as trusting as Mary when God speaks to us are we willing to say, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled as Mary did. She probably had some doubts, but we are told that she went to see Elizabeth. Having spoken with Elizabeth, Mary makes her declaration, what is called the Song of Mary or the Magnificat which we have said this morning. Her overwhelming joy at being God's servant. Mary was totally trusting in the Lord God and poured out her heart in gratitude that God was doing what he had promised to do since adopting Abraham as his son. He was providing a way back to himself for all who have sinned. I don't know that she would have said this had she known what her son was to go through. But she trusted God and his plan. Those of us who are parents know that we would do anything to prevent harm coming to our children. This evening at our Midnight Communion, we will be celebrating the birth of Jesus that was announced in our reading. Jesus came up as a baby, came as a baby, but he grew up, and as we read, and we can read about this in the rest of Luke's Gospel, he spent a lot of time as, of his life as a carpenter, working with Joseph, I suspect, but when it came to the time of his earthly ministry, when he taught all who would listen about his heavenly father's plan for saving the people of the earth. Many people did not like it because it did not fit in with their ideas of what was supposed to happen. So they conspired to have him killed. That baby was crucified and took our sins on himself so that we too can be children of God. When spe Jesus speaks to you about what he wants you to do as a church or as an individual, are you going to be like Zachariah and not believe him? Or are you going to be like Mary and place your trust in him? and get on with it. Yes, to speak about Jesus and the fight for the poor and the oppressed, it may cost us our time, our money, perhaps even some friendships, and put us in uncomfortable situations. Are we going to be willing to speak out, or are we going to be like me in that nativity play? only able to offer silence and inaction. If you want a new year's resolution for next week, what about promising God to do what he asks of you? You will be surprised what he can do if you trust in him, in the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. If you step out in faith, they will be by your side. Amen.